All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, we're having a book chat here today, and I have with me Noelle Granger. She's a blogging friend, and I uh, have uh, read a few of her books, and uh, we've con been connected for about probably about 10 years, or I'm guessing that long. And um, so I was thinking today, uh, first of all, say hello, Noelle. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about Noelle and her books, and she's got some new things in the works. And I thought that uh, we're just going to do a little chit chat. So um, I was thinking, Noelle, about the first time how I met you, and I knew I had met you through WordPress, yeah. but actually I had found your book, um, Death in a Red Canvas Chair. Mm -hmm. Is that the first one in That's your- the very first chair? one. Yes. And I got it through uh, this woman, Rosie. Oh, yeah, Rosie. Rosie's Reviews. Is that the uh -huh. name of her? Okay. Yes, Rosie's so, Review. I review for her now. So You do? Okay, so yeah. that's neat. So how does yeah. she manage all of that? Because she's constantly. I, I see she her reviews. Name. She manages her blog. She reviews for a whole bunch of other places, too. That's insane, like how, how busy she must be. Yeah. But And she's in England, isn't she? Yep, she's in yes. England and she does blog about her garden, which is lovely. Oh, okay. So I need to, I know I follow her blog somewhere. Is she on WordPress? Yes. She is. Okay. I'm pretty sure I follow her, but I'm not sure I have seen some of her posts because so many go by and it's hard to keep track of. Them. I know. I can't do all of my visits every single day. I can't either. I try once a week to jump on and uh, watch, you know, catch up with people and I get really behind and then I'm, <laughs> oh. so, uh, but anyway, I found, I found uh, death in a red canvas chair. So, uh, and I enjoyed that one very much. And uh, so let me ask you, so uh, tell me a little bit about the Re Brewster series and uh, how that, uh, how that came about. Well, um, I retired in 2009 mm -hmm. and I knew that I wanted to write. Um, of course, I, as an academic, I've been writing my whole life, but the papers you write as an academic are very formulaic. Um, I also had, you know, I wrote a couple of books, but they were science books and some reviews, which of course are science. And, and um, I really wanted to do a little more with my gray cells than just sit there and do science. So I sat down and I literally wrote my first book in about six months. Wow. Then I joined a writer's group and discovered that I needed to learn how to write. <laughs> I, I was writing very scientifically. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, so they, they did a very good job, but it took four years before I was ready to publish. Mm -hmm. uh, but they really helped me figure out how to write a book and not a science paper. Oh, now, so let's back up a minute. So um, I know that uh, you have a uh, medical school background. Do you, did you teach, what did you tell us about that background that you- Okay, um, I came to the University of North Carolina after a postdoc at Northwestern and uh, way back in 1981. And um, I went through the ranks. Um, I taught primarily anatomy to medical students and to um, emergency medical technicians and paramedics oh. and occasionally residents. Um, but I also had a lab. I ran a lab. Um, I'm busy reading Codebreaker right now about the gal who got the Nobel Prize for CRISPR. And I could really resonate with the book because I had a lab. I had postdocs. Um, her management style is very much like mine mm -hmm. or mine is like hers. Um, and, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I missed my students desperately after I retired. Um, yeah. How many was, years did you do that? 34. Oh my God. And then before that, I taught at University of California, Irvine for a number of years while my husband was in medical school. Oh, okay. So, wow. And was doing research the whole time. So definitely not all science because you have this creative uh, angle from, you know, and wanting to write fiction. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Did you I really, I really enjoyed it. And I while I was uh, an academic, I wrote little vignettes. I was going uh, to ask you this. For yeah. my kids. And so right now I'm rewriting them and reorganizing them. And I will put them into a a book I want to call Growing Up Pilgrim, Life in Plymouth in the 1950s. Okay, that's neat. So, 
That's really neat. I you put a couple of those on your blog. I did. You've seen yes. them. Yeah. I saw one and uh it, oh, what was it about? It was about was it the great yeah. spinach rebel spinach rebellion? Say that again. The great spinach rebellion. N I don't think so. It had something to do with your house, didn't it? Or oh. I put on the belt or the switch. That was another one. And then I had one about my high school principal. Um, hmm. I may have had one on there about the house. The house was a great character when I was growing okay. up. Okay, yeah. It I was 150 years on. old and it demanded all of my father's attention. So <laughs> my best friend in elementary school was one of 11 children. And so they lived in this huge three-story uh, Victorian style house mm -hmm. that was not in great condition. Uh, it's since been refurbished. They don't, their family doesn't live there anymore, but um, I played there all the time and I still have dreams about the rooms in that house. There was a barn and a little Ooh. playhouse in the backyard that, you know, like yeah. in the spring. Sounds like our house. It was so fun. And yeah. I just lived, grew up in a nice, you know, like a colonial style house, but it didn't have, you know, nearly all the little nooks and crannies that that house. Yeah. Had. So I, dream I about enjoyed that it. house too. Yeah. We had a, a, the, a barn in the back and upstairs in the barn was like a raised platform for a stage. And so the neighborhood kids, we would put together plays for our parents. We did a circus in the backyard one year. Um, it was just a great place to grow up. Wow, that's great. And that was in uh, Plymouth. Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Yes, Plymouth, Massachusetts. Yeah. So, okay, so Re Brewster. Now, would you call those cozy mysteries? Yes. They are. Not and too much gore. Not not too right. much gore. And, and, you know, very gentle little sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, more implied than anything else. It's it's not graphic. And the, the idea of a cozy mystery, too, is it's like a little town or a community and then some characters that yeah. uh a little bit quirky or are they or yep. one might yeah, be quirky yeah the town is a character definitely mm -hmm. and i've been expanding the town with each book adding on here and there um and the a lot of the characters in the book are my high school classmates oh neat. Um, yeah so they <laughs> they seem to enjoy it i mean <laughs> they're always sitting there we have a reunion they want to buy the latest book <sighs> see if they're in there or not that's so great. they they have never objected to my using them at all. That's great. So, but the character Re Brewster is actually um, taken a little bit from one of my high school classmates who unfortunately um, died a few years ago. Um, but feisty, determined, mm -hmm. um, really dedicated. Um, so I, I she's she's part of it. And uh, remind me, so Re's her her detective uh side of things that's not her first job right she has like a real job is it like an emergency medical technician or she's something? an emergency room nurse that's it yes and i could make her that because i took an emt course and got my license so i could use some of the things that i learned that's taking good. the course to create her and she's married first to a guy named will and when I wrote him, he was so perfect that I hated him. I mean, I was writing him and I hated him. And one of my uh, group friends said, well, you know, you can always kill your lovelies. So <laughs> I, I actually made him evil. He had an affair. And I, okay. off, I think in the second or third book. So now she's um, in the later books, she's married to his brother. Sam. Oh, that's kind of juicy. Yeah. 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 That's good. So they, they had the whole brother brother conflict when she was yep. married to Will. And then he he kind of stood by her. And he's her connection to the police force because he's the chief of police for Pequod. Oh, so I remember know, he, some of this now. Yeah. He yeah. brings her in on a lot of investigations and eventually they do the investigations themselves. Mm -hmm. And she eventually gets a job as a part-time investigator for it, which I looked all this stuff up. It's perfectly legit. Yeah. Uh, in Maine. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, and then what's the most recent one of those? Cause you have, um, uh, death in a red canvas chair, a death in a Dacron sale. Right. The third one is death by pumpkin. That oh yeah. 
people like that. I sold a lot of those in Maine. Um, then um, Death in a Mud Flat. And the latest one is Death at the Asylum. Okay. Yeah. So that's, um, that's I have it. an idea for the next one. Um, I think it's going to be Death in a Stone Well. Okay. Um, I'm I'm thinking about it because Rhea is moving house in this next one. So she'll have a, a, a an old house uh, with a stone well. Okay. I like it. Yeah. yeah. But I'm getting distracted, you know, because I'm writing about Daniel Boone. Yes. Um, I'm writing the memoir. And then I decided that I wanted to see if I could write a romance novel. So I started writing a couple okay. of chapters of a romance novel. All right. Well, that's really I have no neat. idea. I, I just like trying different genres. It, it challenges me. Fun. Yeah. Now, do you belong to a writer's group now? Down Absolutely. In Since 2009. Tell me about that. How'd you find it? <clears throat> and uh, how many people? Like, give me all the details on that. Okay. Well, North Carolina is the writing estate in the country. We have more writers per capita than any other state. And the Triangle Writers Group um, is the kind of nexus. And there are critique groups that feed out of that. And they meet at all times, all places. Some of them are for more advanced writers. Some are for beginners. Some focus on science fiction. Some focus on, you know, something else. Mm -hmm. Most of the groups that I've belonged to have been, um, a, a mix of genres. And I, there's one person I actually started with back in 2009 mm -hmm. with a group we call the early birds because they meet in the morning. And he is actually still with me and, the, and a very different group now. But our group that I have now has been together for, I think maybe six or seven years. Wow. We're all published authors. So, so you're uh, like a couple levels up. Right. The, right. And is we it decided, intimidating to, uh, was it like in the beginning to find a group? Was, did you feel intimidated by that or did you? Not just, really. Cause the first early birds, the first group I belonged to was a group of very mixed people. And then I, I actually joined another group I was running to at the same time. And they were all very mixed from beginners to, you know, people that had experience. Um, but this group I have now, I think we're going to stick together um, into the future because we have all discovered we have different talents and those different talents really help us to work on our, you know, get the best out of our, our writing. Um, one writes science fiction, one writes women's lit, one writes romance, um, a guy, and the other is a former flight attendant and she writes about her adventures as a flight attendant. Oh, oh that's yeah. neat. Yeah. So so it's been it's been really interesting. Um, you know, one person really picks up on um wases, too many wases in this paragraph. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. and they each have each have we each have our little things that we pick up on, but we also have the way we, you know, read and other comments to make um in terms of generalized things but we're very compatible we don't take criticism badly and i was going to say you, you really have to have a thick skin to be a writer to begin with oh yeah definitely, absolutely a thick skin you have to be confident uh and i mean it's a it's an unusual combination of things that you have to have and and yeah. and uh like to be in a writer's group you would definitely have to, uh, you know, take criticism well and, and know that it's in the spirit of, of, yeah. of and be willing to dish it out gently. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I came with a thick skin because I had, you know, 40 years of writing papers and writing grants that would get reviewed and some of them were pretty harsh. Um, <clears throat> but I never got a paper totally outright rejected. So I feel good about that, <laughs> but you I have a criticism. I have a memory. Well, I talk about this like it's a common theme in my family, but I had a professor in college who uh, it was my very first class freshman seminar. You know, you do it. And I was pretty clueless, 18 years old. I just so I picked one called Inner and Outer Freedom. And so I didn't really know. I really gave it no thought. And I get in there and it's, you know, 10 people around like a long table. And this professor who's like a legend at the college and it was a philosophy class and it was about, you know, like uh, it was 
I was so, it was so above me at that mm -hmm. age. And, um, but he was the hardest grader I have ever encountered. And I, we, you know, he was so popular, but he was so hard on you and your grades, but you grew to appreciate it. You got better. And he gave me, uh, uh, he would give F pluses <laughs> or D minus, minus, minus. Wow. Or, and if you got a C, he'd be like, great job. <laughs> so, you know, like it, I don't think college is, is the way it was back then where, you know, now it's everybody, you know, it just feels like the A is so important. Oh, I know. I know. It, it really wasn't, it, I don't feel like it was like that, like back in the eighties, but, yeah. uh, so I wasn't like bent on getting straight A's or anything like that. I was just trying to survive college, believe yeah. me. So I got uh, a plus on my first chemistry test. You did, yes. Yeah, so you and the know. professor called me in and he said, "Miss Parsons, I gave you an F plus because you tried." And I I looked at him and and he said, "Maybe you should try a different class." And I said, <laughs> "Oh no, this is the one I want." And I pulled a dollar bill out of my wallet and I put it on his desk and I said, "I'll bet I'll have a B by the end of the semester." And he said, "I'll take that bet." At an A minus at the end of the semester. Oh, good for you. That's so, pretty cool. That's but it really point. gave me, you know, a lot of confidence. It, I had the same thing happen with my math class. It was just a, a question of getting over the hump and being willing to really put the time in. So I mean, I I uh, always think of him because I just think he really knew what it was about. Yeah. Not over praising. And, you know, he really knew it. And, uh, you know, if you got to be on something, you know, it's like, wow. Yeah, definitely. So, so definitely. anyway, but uh, so thick skin, I don't always have thick skin, but, uh, you know, to be a writer, you you definitely yeah. do. I've, I've gotten a couple of rejections as a writer. And I'm, yeah. You know, it doesn't bother me. That's good. That's I just good. figure I can do better. <laughs> so now um, I want to ask you about, you, you mentioned, uh, Growing Up Pilgrim, that's your memoir that you're working mm -hmm. on. And that's little vignettes that you right. have had written already, like over the years. And, right. uh, are and people can into... see them on my blog. Will it be a collection of short stories or how? Yeah, it's basically a collection of little short stories. Some will be funny mm -hmm. and some maybe not. Okay. But, you know. That sounds really good. I love New England. So yeah. that, that would be. A... Yeah. And then um, I read your other one. Uh, Oh yeah, we did talk about the Last Pilgrim. Yeah, that's your that's your historical fiction. Yeah, I loved that book. I just thought it was really great. So tell us quick about that a little bit. Well, one of the jobs I had as a high school senior was as a, a tour guide. Now they call them interpreters um, at what was then Plymouth Plantation and which is now Plymouth Pawtuxet. And you learned. I had to study for a year um, to take the job and then pass a test. And um, one of the things that I got questions about was about the women. And there's a lot of information about the men, but the women are just there. You know, we know about their birth dates, when they died, how many children they had when they got married, but there's nothing about them in particular. And yet one of the things that I discovered in reading about other colonies um, that were established around the same time was that those that did not have women didn't survive. And the reason why this one, Plymouth, survived is because of the women, absolutely because of the women. So I decided I wanted to write about a pilgrim woman. And I had I had my choice because nothing's known about any of them except maybe Mary Warren. And so I, I picked uh, this particular woman. And um, Mary Ellerton was, was the daughter of the Allertons, and she was right in the center of the community. Um, but I, I took a little um, freedom and decided that I would put her out because they did put children out in those days to grow up with other families. Yeah. And I put her out with the Bradfords. Usually it was boys that got put out. But it, to my mind, she had no mother. Her mother died the first winter. Uh, she had a younger sister um, and she had a brother. And her brother and her father basically depended on her sister. I'm sorry, her sister was older, her sister to run the house. And Mary just ran wild. 
She had no instruction. And I, I could see her father saying, I'm going to put you into a household where there's a mother who can teach you how to be a good woman. Yeah. And the so Bradford, her, was that Governor Bradford? Governor Bradford. So yeah. she was basically centrally located for all the events that went on in the early Plymouth colony. And then, of course, she married her husband, who was one of the preachers at the church, eventually one of the elders. And so she remained in the center of Plymouth life for until she died, actually. Um, she was 82 when she died. That's a lot crazy. of the pilgrim women lived a long time. They had a, after the first four years, they had a healthy diet. They had a good physician and they had a fantastic midwife yeah. who took them through all these births and saved their lives probably numerous times. So in, in some respect, that's why we have some 80 million descendants of the pilgrims in the country right now. That's amazing. Yeah. Great so I was story. inspired yeah, by her. If you're watching, I highly recommend that book. I really yeah. enjoyed it very much. Um, yeah, I just went from one thing to another with the research. I had to research agriculture and the food and the cooking and the clothing and um, the farms and the pipes. <laughs> I got into pipes one day. Okay. <laughs> um, and of course, the the, the um, Wampanoag Indians as well. So it was uh, an eye opener. The cover great too. Yeah. I didn't know much about, I mean, I thought I knew a lot about the pilgrims, but it turns out I didn't really know all that much. Um, how did you get the cover designed? Where did that come from? Um, Mary Smith, up this, or? That, this, this, yeah. this cover design. Yeah. There's I'm a little light through it. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mary Smith, who was an, an artist, I told her what I wanted and I gave her the model. I have a pilgrim woman model and I said, could you paint me a painting of this pilgrim woman standing on the shore watching the Mayflower sail away? Because that was a huge emotional step for them because yeah. they were losing their contact. On, yeah. Yeah. And she she did this panoramic vision, which originally wrapped around the book. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I uh, and uh, I, I didn't pay her very much for it, but I really liked it. Yeah, it's really good. I like it very much. So uh, Daniel Boone and me, that's your next, it's historical that's fiction. One. Yep. Yep. So tell um, us about that. I started writing, well, I wrote a short story in response to a blog prompt and I presented it to my critique group and they liked it so much. They said, well, why don't you continue writing about this? Mm -hmm. So basically what I've done is incorporate a, a young girl and her brother, Eliza and Thatch into the Daniel Boone household after her parents are killed by Indians and, and the Boones kind of take her in. Mm -hmm. The Boones had anywhere from 10 to 15 or 19 people in their household at any one time. They just, Rebecca Boone was amazing. And so I, I bring her in and it's during the time when they're in Boonesboro. So I go through the siege of Boonesboro, um, the uh, trial for treason um, of Daniel Boone right after that. And then he has to go back to North Carolina because his wife fled the fled the fort when he was captured by Indians and hadn't come back. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically I, I take it up. She gets married. She goes back to Kentucky. She gets married. And then I keep in touch with him um, during the latter part of his life um, and her becoming more of a pioneer woman herself. And um, wow. that's kind of where it ends. Yeah. It's a short, it's only 14 chapters. So. Okay. And is it, uh, how far along are you with it? You're, you finish the draft or you're working um, I'm on the final edit of chapter 11 right now okay so Very I'm getting there but I want drawings in the book line drawings like I did with I the, love that the yeah and so I, I I do the drawings so I've still got to do the drawings for that and then I've got to get um my my um cover artist did you have to do a lot of drawing for your for your uh, teaching and all for the, the anatomy? Uh, for anatomy, yeah, yeah, I did a lot for anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, but in like in a lecture, like explaining stuff or how? I would download slides of of you know from Netter. Netter is the quintessential anatomy atlas, and I was the editor for the reboot of Netter maybe four or five times. Oh. Um, the drawings are exquisite. He was an incredible artist. Wow, and when he died, they hired uh, another man who drew similarly. And I've got two pictures that he actually drew for me for the new edition. Oh, so, that's neat. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, this is great. It's really uh, great to talk to you in person yeah. and to um, hear all about the things that you have going on. And yeah. uh, I mean, it sounds like we're going to be hearing from you soon about a few things. So, few things, um, yeah. so uh, if you're watching this and you want to connect with Noel, I'm going to have it all in uh, at the end, but also uh, in the description of the, of the video. And so you'll be able to uh, click on those links and find her there. And uh, so thank you so much, Noelle, for joining. I am so delighted yeah, to have this conversation with you. Um, I, yeah. I love talking about my books, as you yeah. know. That's great. And we need to turn the tables and have one on you. Oh, well, I'm just a boring blogger. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barb. I really oh, appreciate Oh, sure. This. Yeah. And uh, oh, I have to do my little, uh, uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if yes. you'd like to subscribe, that would be great too. So thank you all for joining us. And Noel, if you don't mind just staying for just a moment at yep. the end, uh, we'll just wrap things up, do a little, uh, 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 wrap up some details. So yep. thanks again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.